Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ravi and today in this video we'll be building a DIY smart switch that you can control using Alexa, mobile app and from anywhere in the world and this is completely free. So unlike a smart switch that you can buy aftermarket, I mean any Tuya smart switch or any other brand switch, you'll need a different app or a, a ecosystem which works only when your device and your smart switch or smart plug that you purchase is connected to the internet. Otherwise, they can be highly unreliable in situations where internet is not working. But this DIY smart switch keeps working even if the internet is not there. So yes, we are going to make this and this can be controlled through Alexa app. You can also control it using voice assistant such as Alexa Echo, Echo Dot or Google Assistant or Siri. And you can also use this DIY smart switch using your Apple Home. So let's get started and let's build one. Now to build this DIY smart switch, you will need a few things such as a ESP01 chip, a relay module, a power supply. You can buy a high link power supply. I bought a generic power supply because this has been working for me really well. If you can get your hands on on this, uh, you can get it. Otherwise you can go with high link 5 volt power supply. Then you will also need a shouldering iron, some tin and a few other tools such as the screwdriver and a few wires. Now once you have all of this, you can go ahead and connect everything. So first of all, we need to download the Tasmota uh, firmware file. So for that, we'll go to this website and download it. The link is given in the description. You can use that to download this firmware. Once downloaded, you have to connect this USB to serial connector and you have to mount the ESP01 chip on this and then connect this to your uh, PC or your MacBook uh, through the USB port. Once this is connected to your system, what you need to do is you need to go to web.esphome.io website. Now here, what we need to do is we need to click on connect and then choose our connected device from the list. So once this is selected, you have to click on connect again and then tap on install now click on choose file and here you need to choose the tasmota firmware file which we have downloaded now once you select that then tap on install that's all you need to do so first of all we are going to take a 3d printed case which i have printed and this was downloaded from thingiverse so the link is in the description you can download the stl file and print it or you can just get it printed from any 3d printing service so once you have that, uh, just insert the wire and connect it to the input terminals of your power supply. I mean, which accept the 110 or 220 volt input power supply. So once you have connected that, what you need to do is you need to uh, screw two wires or you can also shoulder them to your ESP01 relay module. Make sure you connect wires properly. It is marked with VCC and GND. VCC is positive terminal and the GND is ground. So make sure you connect those wires properly and then pass these wires through the hole which is in the 3D printed case at the bottom and shoulder them to the output terminals of your power supply. So make sure again be very careful connect positive to positive and negative to negative. Confirm this with multimeter uh, if you have or if you have high link power supply it's clearly mentioned there even on this power supply it's mentioned so be careful about that once you have shoulder everything you just have to push it and close it and then you can connect these wires to the extension board or any other board you can use these stripped wire like i have used these are not safe so you can use a code maybe but since I'm going to install these in my conventional boards switch boards so I'm going to keep them uh, like this only now the next part is we need to configure this so once everything is ready the connections are ready we need to connect it to the power supply we'll connect it and now we'll go to our smartphone and there we will open our Wi-Fi settings there we will see our Taskwota access point we need to tap on this and connect to it this is an open Wi-Fi access point, so you don't need to do anything. Just tap on it and it will get connected. Now, in most cases, this will open up a new page as soon as you connect to uh, this uh, Wi-Fi access point. If it doesn't, uh, what you need to do is you need to open a web browser and go to IP address, which is 192.168.4.1. Now, as soon as you visit this IP address, you will see a web page loaded. 
where you will see the Wi-Fi network which is in your home. So make sure the 2.4 gigahertz band is enabled on your Wi-Fi router. You have to tap on it and then enter the password. Once you enter the password, tap on save and this will save the Wi-Fi SSID and the password and it will start connecting to that Wi-Fi network using that password that you provided. Once it's connected, it will show a IP address and you have to note it down for now. Now, in case you missed uh, like that IP and your uh, Tasmota access point is no more available in Wi-Fi, most probably it's connected to your Wi-Fi network. And in that case, you can go to your router settings, uh, DHCP settings, and there you can see the IP address assigned to your DIY smart switch. You can also use an app like Fing on your smartphone to scan your network and find this device. Once you have the IP address, you have to enter this IP address again on the web browser and then it will load a new page where you need to configure your task motor device. Now to configure that, what you need to do is on the page, you will see an option called configuration. Tap on it and then tap on configure module. Now on this page, you will see son of basic. You have to tap on it and you will see multiple options. What you need to do is you need to select generic zero. Once you have selected that, tap on save and then this device will automatically restart. You don't have to do anything or leave this page. Just stay here. It will automatically reboot and reconnect and reload the page. You will be on the home page again. And from here, you have to tap on configuration again, then configure module. And now you will see multiple uh, GPIO pins. So what you need to do is you need to select the D3 GPIO zero. So you will see multiple options there. You have to select relay I or you can select relay whatever you want, both will work. The only difference is in one, the relay will be high on start and in relay I, the relay will be low, which means off when it starts by default. So make sure you choose. You can always change this later also. So once you have selected, but make sure you select relay, not switch. So once you have selected that, tap on save. So this will again save the settings and reboot. Once it reboots, you will see a toggle button so you can now control your smart switch directly from here. Just tap on toggle, uh, it will switch on and off your device. And any load connected to the relay module will be switched on and off directly from your web interface. Now this is controlled locally. What if you want to control it uh, from the internet? I mean, you are anywhere, you can be in office or anywhere and you want to control it. For that, we will integrate this with Alexa. So most of you must be using Alexa or maybe you are using Google Assistant or Siri or Apple HomePod. You can connect this to all of these devices, whatever you have. But for this video, I'm going to show how you can connect it to Alexa. So for that, what we need to do is we need to first configure our DIY smart switch. Uh, so what we going to do is we going to tap on configuration again. And this time we'll go to configure other. Now here you will see device name and friendly name. We will enter a friendly name and device name, which is terrace light in my case, because I'm going to install this on my terrace to control a light. And that's why I'm naming it terrace light. And once I've named it, I'll tap on Belkin Vimo under emulation. You can name it anything you want. Make sure it's descriptive. So under emulation, make sure you tap on Belkin Vimo and then tap on save. Once you have saved these settings, all you need to do is say, Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. Turn on your new devices now, and if needed, put them in pairing mode. So this will take a few minutes, one or two minutes, and this will discover your newly configured DIY smart switch. Make sure it's connected to the power supply when this discovery is on. Now you can also add this device using the Alexa app. So on the Alexa app, what you need to do is you need to go to devices and there you have to tap on the plus icon at the top, then tap on add device. And here you go to the bottom and tap on other, then tap on can't find matching logo and then tap on not sure and let it discover. So once the discovery is done, you will see your DIY smart switch listed in the Alexa app. And from here you can tap on it and you can control it. You can also set up routines or automations using your Alexa app. So le let me give you my example. What I've set up is I have installed a task motor device right here, DIY smart switch. So when I say Alexa, good night, it just 
turns off my bedroom lights, turns on my lamp at 1% brightness and then I go to sleep. So that's what it does. I can show you right now. Alexa, good night. Good night. Talk to you tomorrow. So my lamp is on, lights are off. So basically you got the gist. Alexa, bedroom on. Okay. So in this case, what I've done is I've installed uh, four relays, four relay module. So each relay module controls each light. There are four lights. I can control them individually on Alexa app or I can group them and call it bedroom lights. That's what I've done. So when I say turn off bedroom lights, it just turns off all the bedroom lights. If I say turn off bedroom light one, it will turn off only bedroom light one. I know which one is one and which one is two. So yeah, you got the gist, right? Now this smart device is also smaller than what are available in the aftermarket and which can be installed in your retro switches, in your current traditional mechanical switches and make them smart. Now you can follow this diagram to connect your smart switch. Uh, to any of your traditional switch what you need to do is I'll also show you so these wire will go to the 220 volt power supply or 110 volt power supply uh, which goes to your power supply and this which is coming from the relay module which we have connected to the relay module will go to your switch so for example this button is installed and this controls your light terrace light for example in my case what I'll do is these are two wires which are which are controlling the a uh, terrace light i only need to do is just connect these this is all i need to do nothing else no rocket science anyone can do this so you just have to connect this and you can also control it through your switch and you can also control it through alexa and i have already mentioned that this can be controlled even when you are offline so you don't have to worry about internet always these can keep working but to make them work offline someone has to be at home so yeah this was all in this video i hope you like this video and you learned something new and make sure you subscribe to our channel because i have a lot to share in past three years i've learned a lot i built my entire home smart and i'll showcase that also and you'll learn to make uh, various smart devices including this one this is a diy smart motion sensor which is battery powered so you can install it anywhere and the battery backup you get in this device is up to a month, not more than that. And currently with the ESP01 chip, you get this kind of backup only. So I'll show you, I have installed a few in my home and they are working for past one year. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. Happy DIYing and I'll see you in the next.